the most exciting time in, in many respects for a strength and conditioning coach is offset. We get to do some stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get, to, get to have the fun and and push people hard and make make the real change in the bodies. Uh, yeah, in, in season it's kind of like you're holding on for dear life. Yes, just, just keep them healthy, keep them on court. Don't go backwards. Maintain, yeah. maintain, and, and hold. Yeah, and you, and, and you might sneak them up a little, but it's marginal. Yeah. Whereas off season, you can really sink your teeth into a, a big chunk of strength work. Yeah. Um, and so we're coming up to off season time for off season <laughs> for most of our juniors. Yeah. It's three and a half weeks um, for our, our junior basketballers. Um, so it is topical. I think it's underappreciated what a big deal the occasional off season is and in sports where you're capable of going year round the temptation is to just go year round. Just play and play and play. Um, with our with our Melbourne Boomers program, uh, the majority of the girls go and play Siebel because uh, they can earn some good money, they get to uh, refine their skills package, there's a whole lot of, of benefits of that and they get to stay in, in game shape. Um, but occasionally one of them will actually say, you know what, I'm having this. A season off from Siebel and I'll just do do a legitimate off season. Um, Maddie Garrick did that with us this season. Yeah, uh, and put in, if not the best, top five off seasons that I've ever been involved in. She's put on I can't remember how, three or four kilos, three or four kilos of muscle, lean mass. Yep. Um, taken her strength from a, a max of seventy kilo core. Seventy lift. eighty ballpark up to one ten, one fifteen. She's pushing now on the core yeah. lift for triples. So what's that? Thirty percent. Yeah, 30, 40 percent. Yep. Yeah, um, huge increases made made the whole body more robust, stronger, better. Um, and what was great, and I haven't wanted to talk about this till now because she was a bit nervy about getting back to actually playing because it's like, oh, well, I've forgotten how to play. A bit rust. There's a bit of rustiness when you yeah, when you have to lay off. Yeah. And it wasn't nearly as bad as she thought because she's still been doing individuals, still been doing fitness work, doing running, all this stuff. It's just not actual gameplay. Um, and you know, touch wood, uh, the payoff for that time spent is that. You, you end up with a much more, not just uh, stronger, but more durable, robust athlete. You end up with someone who's fundamentally um, not just an iteration better, but a, a whole, whole level. Yeah. A whole level. So it's better. not Maddie one point one; it's two point oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's taking a, a, like you can potentially transform your game. Yeah. And reinvent your career yeah. with with getting that good any sport, not just yeah. basketball, but yeah, that three or four month block yeah. of solid work. Yeah. And, and in, in other sports, they, they do that very well, like in, in um, the AFL. Like AFL does a great job of that. Yeah. They really build them up and they'll, they'll have a, a very structured period where they're, they're working on, for some of them, the, the young guys that come in here, they know they're just going to get broken if they don't. They're putting a lot of, a lot of size onto them and there's, there's a lot more. And they get, that, they get that period of rest you know, after finals where they just, you know, just mm. go away from the club and you know, mentally as well is really yep. good to refresh. But then the young kids come in earlier because mm. they need the extra work, yep. they need the extra sessions in the gym. But then your older senior guys who are already strong, who have already been through it for a few years, they get an extra couple of weeks because they their balance between Customizing. putting in work yeah. is different, exactly. Mm. Um, and so I think the, the important thing with, with the off-season is to, to de-emphasise uh, the the running that they're doing at a certain point, but not to take it out completely. That's where people get carried. I'll, I'll, I will have young kids say, yeah, I'm just gonna lift for 12 weeks, then I'll start running again. It's like, no. You gotta keep the balance. Yeah, yeah you, gotta keep, you gotta keep enough of that uh, ground reaction force equation going through your body. You gotta keep, you know, really, I think you've gotta have a bare minimum of running three times a week. You've gotta get some level of eccentric force through your body three times a week, just to keep everything ticking over. Whether it's sprints or on courts or on Where fields. it might be a, a jog around, um, around the park, some sprints and one on court or whatever it is, but there's still, there's still something there. Because otherwise we get like the DOM situation like you had. <laughs> or you get a stress reaction yeah. three or four weeks after the return, that yeah, bone so doesn't, that's, that's doesn't keep up and you... Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I think, yeah, off, so I'm always excited this time of year as we come around into that off season period with a lot of our juniors where we can make, and we only get a smaller window, but you can still make a decisive little point, kind of a half jump because you, you can push them a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Um, or what, and what sometimes happens is you get, uh, not this time, you get your impromptu off-season because someone has a significant injury and they come along and you've got, like, actually, you get de sort of de facto off-season because they're injured now. Not, not the off. perfect way to do it, but... <laughs> yeah, but you can still get really good results. Yeah, so you can it. use that as an opportunity as opposed to a, a curse, yeah. Mm. Mm. Some key off-season takeaways. Mm. So junior athletes both with us, with us training here and not with us, what sort of things should they be focusing on? What do you think the, the buckets that are missing? I think the, the single biggest bucket is 
actual proper strength, just that foundation of, of a strong body. So, and often it's it's difficult to chase that very hard in season because you, you've got someone who's training with you on a Wednesday night and you know on a Thursday morning they've got PE, a Thursday night they've got some other training and then a Friday night they've got a game and Saturday morning they've got a game, Saturday Arvo they've got a game. You know. And Sunday they've got training again and you start again. Yeah, exactly. And so um, you just can't push uh, as hard as you'd like. I think the big thing I'd love to see out of our athletes this off season coming up would be to, for everyone to get really good single leg strength. Yeah. You know, because that's the one that's the hardest one, that's the hardest leap to make. Because you can do bilateral, like double leg, where you're just gradually sneaking the strength up. But it's hard to take someone from okay single leg strength to great single leg strength yeah. in season. Because you are worried about the adductors and... There's a bit of a ductal load there. There's a bit more glute work, especially the glute med. Mm. And then it's just, it's just high intensity. So. Yeah, and it's harder to, to... It feels like it's a bit of a jump to make. So that's what I'd love to see our guys get. Because um, they're good at single leg, um, but to get really dominant put it in a video, look at how amazing that is, yeah. strong. Put it on Facebook level, <laughs> yeah. single leg work. Yeah. That's the ultimate test, is it, yeah. you know, is, it, is it good enough to want to put it on Facebook? Um, it's interesting, uh, we've got, we had Liz Cambridge back in the gym last night, yep. uh, fired up as all hell, like, it's all about Tokyo, like, like yep. it's, it's like, for, for her, it's like, it's a four year off season just started, um, because she's obviously very passionate about um, having a better result. She came in the day before that and saw us in the office and did some maths on her phone and said it was 530 days until, <laughs> yeah. until the Com Games and then to Fevers. Yeah, so she's got it mapped out. She's got the maps so she knows that's the first one, you know, get back in the medals and then use that as the springboard onto Tokyo in 2020. Yeah. Um, and, and so she was asking me last night, what should I be doing in terms of, mo of what running and so forth? Um, and yeah, the temptation is to do nothing. So oh, we'll, take, we'll take a month off and do nothing. But with a six foot eight, girl of her size it's you know you want to we want to keep you running just a little so i said run keep that elasticity through the tendons yeah, yeah keep keep running three times a week plenty of cardio on the bike and then lift the house she wants to do chin-ups so that's, that's yes a, yes <laughs> that's a good project Start dunking on people yeah <laughs> um but i think that's a good example of even if it's a longer term thing you've just got to keep that that keep a floor of running as in ceiling and floor you've yep. got to you've got to maintain uh, maintaining a floor is just as important in the off season as not going through the ceiling is during the season. It's yeah, if you end up in the basement for your running, it makes it a lot harder to break through the floor again and get back to a decent level, which is what I'm going through at the moment now, trying to mm. ease back into things. Mm. It takes right. time. Right. We've got 11, 11 weeks. 11 weeks until I, until I kick your butt. <laughs> Maybe.